Good afternoon. Um, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> As you can tell, if you or I should say, if you can't tell from the audio, I have a bit of a stuffed up head, head cold as it were. And so I was really sitting on the fence about whether I was going to, going to bail on my Facebook Live today, but I've got a commitment to do this every day, so I'm doing it anyway. And I thought, there's an idea for a topic. Is sickness and in health? So I'm going to bring that up because I'm dealing with something on my own right now. So I figured I have some memories of some experiences in past relationships, so I'll share about those too. So before I jump too far in, this is, chat, this is episode number 544. Wow. Um, the, ta- the topic today is in sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. Sounds lovely, isn't it? Um, how do you love? So I'll get to that in a second. Before I do, and I'll be doing this a lot, so just bear with me as I'll be in, <laughs> making some horrible sounds in the microphone, so bear with me. Um, let me choose myself before I get too far in. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. <laughs> Sounds lovely right now. And every day for the last almost two years, I do these Facebook, yeah, perfect topic indeed, Marsh. <laughs> um, and today's episode is number 544. Sorry, excuse me. For the last almost two years, I remember my, my script. Um, so, hi, Bonnie. Um, excuse me. It's already... Make it smug and have a nice red nose at the end of today. So, <laughs> got too much about it. So, anyway. So, for the last almost two years, I've done these Facebook Lives every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today's episode number 544. And the topic today is about sickness and the health because I'm dealing with that myself. But how do you love? And, and I'm going to tell you a story. And I'm also going to ask you some questions for you to consider for yourself and offer some, um, I won't say solutions, but some suggestions because. I don't know all the answers. I never claim to that, but I do have some material. Okay, I'm drinking some hot tea, so I won't be up as well. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to keep this short because I want to keep my throat from getting overtaxed. So I would say many years ago. It sounds bad. It was definitely at least 10 years ago. Um, I had a really passionate one-month relationship, really passionate one-month relationship. And I'm telling you this because I want to explain how that fits this context so you understand where I'm coming from. I had this very chemistry-based, totally sexually driven, passionate relationship with this girl, this woman I met. Um, I mean, it was a lot of fun until, and the truth was that our um, chemistry was great, the connection was wonderful, the sex was wonderful, but we weren't really friends. It was still very much driven by the passion. Now, the thing was, is when we got to the, um, <laughs> when we got to this situation that happened, that's when things change. Now, so let me just say a couple of things. So we were going out for about a month at the time, and we were staying at her place a lot because um, she happened to have this mansion she was still sharing with her ex-husband. Don't even talk, don't even ask me about that one. That was messy. He had his own life. She had her own life anyway. So in the second part of the, of the mansion, and so we stayed up in her 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 tower, her side of the <laughs> mansion, the wing of the house, and we went out one night. She has some food poisoning, and so we come home and she's feeling really sick and. That's, at one point, she has to go to the bathroom to throw up. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be graphic, but... Hang on. Uh, lovely. <laughs> this is transparent, naked experience of me being sick <laughs> on camera. Um, anyway, she basically has to go to the bathroom to throw up. And being who I am, and being in it full on, I went over to her and held her hair back while she was throwing up in the, in the toilet. For me, that's totally like, of course... I mean, I'm going to sit back and watch her throw up and just, just ignore her. It's like, no, it's not me. That's not my style. So that's what I did. Now, she received that very, I would say gingerly, very cautiously and not very well, to be honest. This is hindsight I'm telling you now because I didn't know at the time. I was just doing what I was doing. But the next day, we had this very frank talk about lack of connection. And I'm like, I feel connected. But what I realized afterwards, and this is now really strong hindsight, I looked back and I realized that what scared her more than anything else, because I also found out about some of her ex relationships, was she was afraid of intimacy. And now sex was fine, but intimacy is a whole different thing. If you know what I talk about, you know, I talk about both. And my um, being in her intimate space, holding her hair back while she was throwing up was more intimate than me being inside her sexually, you know? That's the dif- there's a different energy there. Hang on, here we go again. <clears throat> runny nose is really fun so that experience taught me a lot 
on many levels, but in particular that instance it taught me about how I show up in a relationship and how some of those people don't. I'm not saying I'm better than, just different. So this whole till death to us part, you know, sickness in the health, yes, it's an old it's an old fashioned um litany <laughs> at traditional weddings, but there's some resonance in there for a reason. And my question to you is if you're in a relationship and your partner gets which is gonna give you two questions. If you're in a relationship and your partner gets sick, do you step in to help or do you step back and walk on and hide out or shut down or close off? Alternatively, if in a relationship you get sick, do you allow your partner in to help you, to support you, to be close to you, or do you push them away and, and, and create a barrier between you and them? Now I'm going to give you some suggestions, not answers, because everyone's different. And I want to make sure you get this point. All of this is a choice. There's no rules about this. But it's a choice of whether or not you feel that you're willing to go that extra mile to be in a relationship with somebody where if something happens to them, maybe it's not them throwing up from food poisoning, but maybe they get a splinter in their finger or they break their arm in a bicycle accident or they, they're in hospital because of a car accident. I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole gamut and range of what could be happening. Not saying, not suggesting this can happen. Sorry, not suggesting it will happen. But I've been reading some posts recently of friends who have gone through some major cha challenges. In fact, a friend of mine, a couple of friends of mine in San Diego, um, they know who they are, Great, great couple of people got married, and he's dealing with um, a tumor in his head. And to hear them, and to rather to read their posts on Facebook individually and to let together, it really touched me deeply how richly authentic they are, how connected they are, and how they're doing this journey together. That, to me, I personally think is a good thing. Again, not rules, my preference, my suggestions. So, if you're someone who is afraid to connect when it's that close, that intimate, that, that exposed, you may have a look into that. Because I would suggest your freedom is when you can blow, th blow th not blow through, but move through that to a place where you don't feel a barrier needs to be up anywhere in this di diagram. Whether it's more easy to get into sex in bed with somebody, or easy to show them when you've got an open wound. Because the truth is, you aren't changing in the situation. You may present differently, but who you are doesn't change. So why would you want your partner to do, actually treat you differently in those situations? To be kind, to be caring, to be loving. I don't mean to have sex when you're injured, I don't mean that. But I do mean having the freedom to choose to serve yourself and your partner by being open to that. Now, this t little topic, this little theme, this little um, question I, I offer to you about how do you love can destroy a lot of relationships. A lot of people are getting relationships, <coughs> excuse me, and deal with what is happening at a, at a level that's really surface, I would, I would call it. They're not willing to go deep enough, or should not be that way. When the deep stuff shows up, when the really upset stuff shows up, they don't go into the depth of actually dealing with that. So if there's a physical illness, or there's a, well, there's certain things that are be break, deal breakers, because things are not. So getting sick could be one thing, but if they stole a car, that may not be appropriate for you to say yes to because it's not necessarily workable within your framework. It might be a deal breaker because they broke the law. If that's one of yours, maybe it's not. Maybe it's like, oh, you, do, you did install a car, let's, uh, let's put it back. You know, depends how you want to do things. So I'm, I'm just throwing out very random ideas to give you thinking. This is, this is not an answer video this time because I don't, I, don't, I don't have a clear enough head to give you answers. <laughs> but I have a thick enough head right now with the, with the sinus stuffed up to provoke some questions that I want to have you, I'd love to have you think about. Um, hang on, take a sip before my throat dries out. <clears throat> I think that's really it. I mean, the truth be told, there's not much else to talk about if you don't even get to this point, because being willing to jump all in, both feet and go deep into the relationship, does require you to go beyond that comfort level where, oh crap, they're sick, I can't handle it. So my invitation is to look at that see where you're afraid to jump in and also you're afraid where you're afraid to let in the other person if you're sick these two things are i would say how to say this in one way massive expansion points you know so what do you say marsh Jean? let's have a look you, you you've been in a relationship including marriage when the beloved other becomes ill in every case the only brought up was closer and into more intimate connection with the divine that is wonderful again Choice, not saying it's the right way, or the wrong way. I have a preference, which is that which agrees with this is that illness 
is for some people when someone gets sick it's like okay I'm walking away I can't handle this for some people it's like it's part of the relationship so where do you want to stand in that place do you want to dive in do you want to be a support do you want to help your friend your partner your beloved other get well again that's a question you need to answer for yourself for some people they're not willing to go there some people even spiritual people spiritual sorry spiritual using the right quotes there I was doing this it doesn't make sense um even spiritual people aren't necessarily comfortable in this area of stretching into a physical level of intimacy they weren't prepared for. Um, I think really like that. I mean, this this is not the most um, elegant Facebook Live. As I said, I've got a head cold that's blocking my um, intuition, shall we say. It doesn't feel connected right now. But I want to talk about this because it's on my mind, literally, figuratively. So I wanted to share that point. So, so Bonnie, your former, former fiancé who was a doctor abandoned you when you became unwell. He was a doctor and he walked away. Whoa. Okay. Again, I'm on the page of where you stay connected no matter what. Um, in the sense of physical challenge stuff. I have a different, different rules about cheating, um, breaking the law, um, abuse, that sort of stuff. But in this particular instance about getting sick and getting well again, in sickness and in health, I feel there's a lot of room for people to grow into being comfortable in a relationship and not running away scared. Because some, in that case, he might have been that way. I don't know. So, um, and by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're wondering, who are these people talking? This is a, this is a Facebook Live first. So when I do a Facebook Live first, I, I can see the comments coming up and I respond to them live. On YouTube, you won't see them. That's why I read them back out and then answer them so you know what I'm talking about when you're watching it on YouTube without comments. Cool? Um, I'll give you the links for those at the end. Uh, what else on that? I think that pretty much sums it up because it's really about for you to think about this. Your homework, yes, your homework is to think about this. To sit with... If you're in a relationship, or if you're not in one, excuse me a second, here we go again. <sighs> Lovely, <laughs> runny sinuses, so much fun. So your homework, if you so choose, if you're comfortable with this, then all well and good. How deep have you gone? How deep can you go? If it's easy on one side, giving to the other, but not giving, not being led to somebody into yourself, there's room to grow. If you are unwilling to do either one of those, you may have some room for growth. Now you don't have to, you can stay where you are, that's fine. But if you want true intimacy, true connection, true depth, that's part of the package. I'm not saying it has to happen, but if it does happen, you don't run away. And I guess if that's my bottom line for this is, if something comes up for you in any area of relationship with your partner, do you have enough of an openness and an intimacy and a connection where you can actually talk about it? Because if you have a partner who doesn't want to help you when you get sick, could you have a conversation without accusing? Could you have a conversation with them saying, you know, I got sick, I felt like you disappeared and I got really worried. That's a ownership perspective on saying, when I got sick, you ran away. A difference? So ownership language is key because when you start owning who you really are and own your space, you can be more whole. And when you're in an intimate relationship, the wholeness is what makes it easier to become more intimate because there's more of you present when you get close to somebody. That was pretty good. Hmm. I have another talk for tomorrow, I think, if I'm better tomorrow, that um, is a... Is a um, what's the word I'm looking for? A question that came up in yesterday's broadcast um, that was going to go in today, but because of where I'm feeling, I thought I'll do one about this today because I'm on point with this one. So if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them in, in below and I'll answer when I sign off. Um, I am still running my holiday specials. I'll be scheduling people when I get better again. But if you want to jump in now, the deals are still available and I've still got a few spaces. Um, they are ridiculous. Well, I'll just say it this way. I would say they're ridiculously low priced. But I don't want to undersell my work because it's way more valuable than that. And if you saw my broadcast a couple of days ago, it was yesterday, I posted a testimony from one of my clients that was so clear about how the work, the way that we work works, the way that we work works, yeah, it works, <laughs> that I am really not willing to put the prices too low. Anyway, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me so we can sign up and have a, have a conversation, see where you are. It's complimentary, my gift to you. We can talk and I'll tell you about my offers, my holiday specials. Um, you know what? This is relevant. Okay, so I was thinking about putting the self love practice up because I'm putting up my. I don't want to put it in my broadcast if it's not relevant, but it is relevant because we have a tendency sometimes to be hard on ourselves when we get sick, which drives other people away. So, not necessarily is it their fault or their issue that they walked away from you when you were sick. It could be you pushed them away because you don't feel comfortable. 
part of that reason is, and I'm clear about this, is you may not be loving yourself in sickness and in health. Yes, this is reversed. This is how you take the, the vows of marriage and turn it on yourself. So when you're saying in sickness and in health, are you taking care of yourself in sickness and in health? Or do you try to avoid everything, hide out and avoid people? I have my self-love practice just for that reason. Well, not that one, but it has many reasons. But this is a place, place where I'd recommend it because if you learn how to love yourself and you start practicing that muscle, flexing that muscle of self-love, especially when you're healthy, when you get sick, you won't give up on yourself. When you get sick, you'll be there for you. As strange as that sounds, you will be, you know what I mean, when you get there. When you get sick, you will actually do the right things to take care of yourself. And when you get sick, or if you get sick, excuse me, if you get sick, you'll be comfortable reaching out for support and help for other people. Self-love really does work. So I'll put that link in the comments as well. With that, I thank you for watching. Um, oh, replays. This is my Facebook Live first, as I mentioned. It goes onto YouTube and then onto my podcast after that. So the links for those. Um, my podcast goes onto my business page on Facebook, amongst other places, but it's the best place to find them, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author, or on, uh, you know, as it's written. Um, and then it goes onto YouTube, which I invite you to subscribe to my channel, which is Barry Selby. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. You can watch all of them there. They're all listed in reverse order. And finally, I'm putting them on my podcast, Slowly But Surely, which is also called Messages from the Masculine on iTunes. You can subscribe to that channel as well and download them if you wish. Listen to them when you're driving, cycling, doing other things where you can't look at the phone. Um, and there you go. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for being with me. Take care of yourself. I'm doing the same thing. Best I know how to do. That's why I've got some good stuff in the cup. There's no alcohol. Um, I know better than that. And uh, with that, I'll see you tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time once again. Oh, by the way, if you know my, this is Tuesday, and normally, Tuesday nights, I'll be joining up with my friend Gina uh, in Venice and doing, uh, Gina and Barry doing it live at 7, uh, 6.30, 7 o'clock. Because of this, we've done it, well, because of this and she has three newborn kittens that are taking over the whole studio space. So we're postponing to next week. So by the way, if you want to check out the kittens, if you go to Gina Hendricks on Facebook, this one, we do this one together every week, usually last week we did it. She just got the kittens at that point, or getting the kittens that night. Um, just check out her wall. There's so many great little um, videos and pictures of these amazingly cute little kittens. And if you're looking to adopt, she's got three. Um, they are siblings. Uh, two greys and a ginger. Really cute. I think they're only, they're only a few weeks old. They're just ridiculously silly cute. All right. So I won't be joining her tonight because I'm going to be taking care of myself and my throat. Um, I invite you to add some comments below if you feel like you've got some thoughts from this, some feedback from this talk, and if it has value for you. And again, I'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care of yourselves. Bye.